everybody, I'm Namita Thapar, Executive Director of MQ Pharmaceuticals and today we're going to talk about a super interesting topic, egg freezing. As always, let me start with a shocking statistic. Did you know that a woman loses 90% of her eggs by the age of 30 and 97% of her eggs by age 40? I know this is a very scary statistic. All the more reason why women in their late 20s, early 30s should consider getting their eggs retrieved, get them frozen and use them later when they're ready for their pregnancy. Let me introduce my dear friend Rishikesh Pai. Hi. Dr. Pai, thank you so much for joining us. And uh, Dr. Nandita, two lovely doctors who do this for a living. And Vandana, thank you so much uh, for being here and sharing your story with my us. Pleasure, my pleasure. Let's start with the very basics. What's the right age? to get your eggs retrieved and eggs frozen? I think, uh, as you said before, you know, 90% goes. So 25 to 35. The later, the better it is. I mean, 27, 28, because 25 is too young. But before 35, definitely. That that's is, a, that's that's a good a age that women should keep yeah. in mind. Yeah. But you know, Amita, we get patients between 35 to 40 also. Right. Because for them, that's the only option. Okay. So I think we don't have a cutoff as such. But ideal age, yes. You know, late 20s and early 30s. And what is the process? You know, it just sounds so intimidating and painful because people tell you about those multiple injections you have to take. Uh, just in brief, in layman terms, Dr. Pai, why don't you just quickly tell us what, what is the process? So basically, uh, once a person wants to freeze her eggs, uh, we would analyze her and, uh, you know, investigate her, see her ovarian reserve. So normally we do an anteral follicular count and we do anti malarian hormone test Correct. and to see what is the reserve. And after that, we stimulate her. So normally, they take about 10 or 11 injections. Nowadays, mm -hmm. they are very painless okay. because they are under the skin, just like... Uh, you know, an insulin injection. Can you self-inject or do you go to a doctor? You no, know, no, you can even self-inject. We okay. monitor them and once they are ready, we admit them for a oocyte retrieval. It takes just about 10 minutes. We give a short anesthesia and within 4-5 hours, they can go back home. So the entire process, the 10 to 12 injections is over 12 days plus one more day for the retrieval. So you're talking about a two-week two window yeah. for the process to go on. Right. <clears throat> and are there any side effects? So after taking these injections and after the retrieval, is is it that she can, you know, like next day go back to gymming and working or not really? Like what, what does she need to uh, know in no, terms she, of side effects? There's no, not really much of side effects. Sometimes like with any surgery, you can have a complication, but that's very rare. So, I don't okay. think there's any side effects. Only thing she needs to be careful because after the ritual, the ovaries are a little enlarged and heavy. So, a right. little bit of a slightly lower level of activity and then you resume your work. You can back go again. back to work. Yeah. Um, tell me, Dr. Nanda, what is the typical cost? Is this something that's very prohibitive <coughs> or is it, is it covered by insurance and EMIs? How does it work? Because women need to know this. You know, women basically need to know everything before they yeah. make this decision. I think first, let me say it's a very patient-friendly okay. treatment, okay? And the cost is variable. You know, anything from uh, 70,000 to even 3 lakhs. There are companies who are actually freezing eggs for their young employees so that they can work and not worry about childbearing. The insurance uh, sector in our country right now has become very, uh, you know, active and they are, uh, they are creating packages uh, because obviously they have to go through the actuaries and all those finance terms which yeah. you know. And uh, they will prepare it and they are coming up with the things. Of course, there are EMI schemes also mm -hmm. which are available. But see, this is the cost of one uh, cycle of 14 days. One related question I wanted to ask you is when you give the injections, stimulate the ovaries, you may not have enough eggs, right? And you may have to repeat the cycle yeah. for 14 more days. So, um, I guess there are two questions. One is, how many eggs are enough eggs? Like, how many, what is the optimum number to get and store? And um, what is a cutoff where you say, okay, you have to do this a second time, we don't have enough eggs? It's all age related. And of course, your ovarian reserve. As you said, Indian girls, uh, you know, get a menopause seven years earlier. The aging starts much yeah. earlier. So, 10 to 15 eggs when you're under 30 would be a good. 35, I like 15 to 20 eggs. We even both differ on that. But uh, I think as you grow older, you need more eggs. See, there are fertile women also who've had a divorce, who've been widowed or 
you know, they've had their second marriage and they want to do it. So I think, you know, this is a technology which empowers girls. So bottom line is 15 to 20 eggs is your optimum number. If she's under the age of 35. Per cycle. Yeah. Okay, per uh, cycle. You yeah. differ? Yeah, no, no. I, no mine <laughs> is a target is 10 to 12. Putting 20, him on the spot. 10 to 12 <laughs> eggs. But, you know, like we have a new program, yeah. Artificial Intelligence. So... After the eggs are taken out, we uh, take the uh, photograph and export it to a server abroad okay. and the server tells you whether these eggs are good enough for a pregnancy in the future. Oh that's a good point. You know why? Because it's not just the quantity, it's the quality, quality of eggs. Yeah. How do they check on the quality so, of the eggs? No, so the, the only way is the number and the age. Okay, age so there's no the other number. way to no, really no check way. the quality. You can have a look at the eggs and all, but the age and the number is the only predictors and that's why 10, 12 eggs she, in her uh, dictionary it is... 15 X plus <laughs> mine is 10, 12, but that's. But that's about the range that you're talking about. That was the one more question you asked about repeated cycles. Yes. So, in our group now, because we see it's not the money that we are looking at, it's uh, giving a service. So, if a person has less eggs, we'll do a second cycle at cost price. Understood. And we don't Understood. recharge for freezing we'll also. We don't. Understood. So, we Understood. accumulate the number of eggs because. That's where the problem is. Yeah, I mean, of course, in this case, the more the better. Then why is it that when, you know, a lot of single women um, or even, you know, married women who want to delay their pregnancy are told that, hey, why don't you freeze your eggs? Why do they get offended even now? Why is it still something that's a taboo in our country? The generation which is there now, they don't want to talk about childbearing. They want to have fun. They want to enjoy their life. So they are <clears throat> not very keen on it. And they feel that we are not infertile. See, that's what needs okay. to be clarified, that you're not infertile, but there is a high chance that you'll face difficulty later on. Yeah. So you have to balance it out. You can't do it too early. Right. Because many times what happens then, it is a waste of resource because many of that's these people true. are going to become pregnant spontaneously. Right. So yes. you have to do it balance. So 30 to 35 would be a good time to do it. If at all you feel that you're not going to get married or you're not going to meet the right guy, or you want before to the age of 35 or you right. just want, want to, to delay because yeah, of career, exactly. yeah, career issues. You know, career. Exactly. So, so then in those cases, you should freeze them. Absolutely. But you know, Namita, we are seeing a lot of young girls, 25 to 30 with low AMH. Mm -hmm. AMH is, as he mentioned... What is the reason why is with the new generation, the AMH depleting? Which is, AMH is basically your ovarian reserve. Exactly. So I personally feel it could be, uh, there is a genetic component to it. Then there is a, something called the environment. The environment toxins are causing that. It's causing accelerated aging. You know, we have so much contaminated right, food right, yeah. with pesticides and all those so the environmental factors are affecting this that's why you need to do an AMH as a routine screening test oh yeah that's a good point so, like, you know, make it, it part of your yeah, annual blood test yeah, yeah. Check up. annual blood right. test AMH yeah. helps you understand your ovarian reserve which is the quantity and quality Things of your eggs right. basically now a controversial question storage of these eggs I don't know, it's me or a lot of women talk about, are, lekin, you know, theft ho gaya, swap ho gaya, hamara eggs. Yeah. Um, does it happen? So now we have got a lot of systems in place wherein, uh, uh, you know, you can actually now tag the eggs yeah. with radio frequency tags. So there is no, no like question of RFID. Of, yeah, RFID no oh. question of swapping uh, the eggs. And, you know, we also have now new regulations where we have to lock the room where the eggs are stored. It has to be monitored properly. So, the chances of anyone stealing it is not... I don't know. You hear these <laughs> sensational <laughs> YouTube Swap videos of yeah, yeah. eggs uh, stolen and eggs swapped. And you're like, is this my baby? <laughs> that is why the country has come out with the ERT regulation law. Uh, law. Okay. That, and that's now a everything is yeah, so everything is monitored now. We had to document everything properly, and you uh, know we had to be qualified. And there is the inspections. Etc. So ART stands for artificial reproductive Techniques. Uh, techniques or right? technology or technology, and that basically covers infertility procedures. And that is a very good way uh, to just have that healthy fear in people not to do the scams. How long how long can these eggs be stored, doctor? How many years till you know they're they're fresh and can be used? 
till the temperature is maintained at 196 degrees minus, minus 196 degrees they will be maintained so you can really years years, five years right. 10 oh, years 10 15 years, okay. years. I, we've had a patient <clears throat> who came back after 15 years of freezing embryos of yeah, course yeah, yeah. but okay. all our patients can it be done after yeah, menopause we have, we have, we have, we have given it, the babies to people after 10 years of freezing and all yeah oh. so can egg it be done? freezing technically after yeah, yeah. menopause sure, sure. can you do it, it can after be done after menopause yes. no no we yes. can we have to do the freezing before Forehand. No, the pregnancy, of yeah, course. Yeah, obviously. Yeah, yeah. But the, a cutoff age is 50 now by the law. Oh, is it? Yes. So I think that's a very important point you've brought up that for any infertility procedure. For women, procedure, it's 50. For men, it's 55. Of course. Yes. Always. 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 <laughs> always. Better numbers for the men. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, let's move on to Vandana. Hi. Vandana, I'd love to hear your story. Um, thank I'm, you for being with us today. They are today. my magic. Hands, I call Your magicians. My absolute magicians. I got married late. Uh, I was working. Uh, so that obviously takes a lot of your time as an actor. I was also taking care of my siblings and my parents. So it was a lot of uh, responsibility single-handedly uh, on my shoulders. So this happened. I married at 35 and I was lucky that I had... Uh, I got pregnant the first month oh. of marriage. Uh, I was like like a jackpot you know you just get married and next month you miss your periods and uh, but unfortunately I had uh, a miscarriage uh, on my fifth month and I had back to back three miscarriages uh, at 35, 36, 37 and I, I stopped working and I said I want to really give this a, uh, you know and um, I forget about egg freezing you know Namita it wasn't even IVF was not something that people were so open about. Even my own husband, when I told him, like, let's think of IVF, he's like, why? We're normal. But with a lot of, uh, finally, uh, my, I got my husband to meet Dr. Pai, and, you know, they had a conversation. And we got down to taking that step. So at 45, it was a shock to my family, friends, doctors, science, everybody. And they're like, who did it? So I said, well, destiny, my manifestation, first and then of course the, the right people guiding the right you. People, you uh, how many cycles did you go through? I went through three to four IVF cycles. Three to four cycles before you had success and yes. that's where you wish you had frozen your eggs that's and you where, had that information yes, earlier. Yes, yes. My entire thing was about I wanted to be a mother, I wanted to have a baby. I tried surrogacy that also failed. But finally when this uh, happened I applied and the next month I can, you know, I went for a cycle and right. I got a jack. It was right. twins. I lost one. I had to get my baby out in the sixth month. And uh, so this is uh, what happens. And all this would have not happened, you know, if I would have uh, frozen my eggs Absolutely. and got, I wouldn't go through so many cycles. Right. I wouldn't have that. But uh, I still remember. And probably an easier pregnancy too. Yeah. And I still remember when I uh, used to make my embryos and uh, save it and keep it. Uh, coming back to age, coming back to EMH, the, the embryos that were recent were not really working. Okay. But one or two, which I had kept it earlier, like my first cycle, that kind of helped working. So age really makes a difference. Absolutely. Yeah. No, this is fantastic. I mean, so much information for our audience to really think through. And end of another fabulous episode. But the one thing I want to leave all of you with is egg freezing has to be done. Get your AMA checked every year. Women, there is something called a time or a biological clock. Become aware. Don't be in denial. Don't judge. Don't shame. Support. Educate. And let's get those eggs frozen sooner rather than later. Thank you. Ban ke